Have you ever, like, peered behind the digital curtain of a hospital system and wondered what really happens when a critical new lab result, maybe something like a marker for heart failure, needs to show up seamlessly, you know, in a patient's electronic health record? It's, uh, it's a journey. Way more intricate than just hitting save. And trust me, I've navigated its twists and turns well, countless times. Behind this channel is a real health IT professional who loves AI. And today, yeah, I'm welcoming you to walk through how to integrate a new lab observation into an EHR user interface. We'll use Epic as our example, but honestly. The principles apply to pretty much any EMR system out there. Just a quick disclaimer first, I'm not an EPIC certified trainer, but I am deeply experienced in electronic health records, you know, EHRs and electronic medical records, EMRs across different platforms. The workflows I'll show today, they're based on industry best practices and they apply broadly, whether you're working in EPIC, Cerner, MedTech, or well, another system. My real skill, the thing I love doing, is teaching you how to use AI to really master healthcare IT. To help you excel in your day-to-day -day role, whether you're an analyst, an informaticist, or, you know, any healthcare tech professional, check out the links if you want to connect for a one-on-one -on -one coaching experience. Okay, so let's walk through how this actually happens. Like, when a patient comes into the hospital... Yeah, and it's easy to just see adding a new lab result as, like, a technical task, right? It's just another item on the IT checklist. But the really essential thing to remember is that this isn't just data moving around. It's about getting truly vital information into the hands of clinicians mm -hmm. in real yeah. time. And that directly impacts their ability to make, well, potentially life-saving decisions. Exactly. So let's imagine you're an analyst at, let's call it City Care Hospital. Yeah. And your team gets a request, add a new lab test, BNP, that's brain natriuretic peptide, yeah. super crucial marker for heart failure. You need to get this into Epic so clinicians can see it, track it over time, and most importantly, act on it. It's definitely not just simple data entry. It's more like um, building a really robust pipeline for critical patient info. Right. And the stakes, they're incredibly high. The faster and you know more accurately that BNP result appears, the sooner a doctor can adjust the care plan for someone whose heart might be really struggling. So we're talking direct impact on patient outcomes here. And for you, the analyst, that means you really have to understand all those intricate connections between, say, a lab instrument all the way over to a clinician's dashboard screen. What often gets overlooked, I think, is just the sheer number of systems and touch points involved. And each one has its own rules, its own potential for, uh, for miscommunication. Oh, definitely. When I first started in health IT, the complexity, just integrating these new data points, it felt utterly overwhelming, seriously. It wasn't just about getting info from point A to point B. It was trying to grasp the entire, like, sprawling ecosystem. And I asked myself all these questions. How does the lab actually process this BNP test? Okay, then how does that result travel securely through an HL7 interface? And where does an integration engine pick it up? And then how does Epic uh, receive it, translate it, and route it into the right flow sheet or the right result component so it finally shows up exactly where a clinician needs to see it in their user interface? It felt like navigating this, this dense fog of acronyms and protocols, like, Every turn presented a new challenge. I remember yeah, yeah. one early project seemed like a really minor lab test, but it took weeks to fully integrate. Just because one single kind of obscure data field was consistently missing from the HL7 message. It was like um, trying to find a specific grain of sand on a huge beach. I realized that every single lab test, it needs a standard code for universal understanding. Think of it like a common language, right? Spoken across all the different healthcare systems. So you need to ask your lab team for it. Or you meticulously look up the correct L-O-I-N-C code. We pronounce that LOINC. For our BMP example, it's often 30,934.5. And this isn't just about some random number. This standard code, this LOINC code, that's what ensures interoperability, which means the BNP result from CityCare Hospital it can be correctly interpreted by another hospital or maybe an outside specialist, even a public health registry. It's reusable in reports, which is critical for things like population health analytics, and it's essential for external sharing. But the real insight here isn't just that you need LOINC. It's realizing that even with the correct code, you can still get misinterpretations if the, uh, the context or maybe the units aren't mapped really meticulously. I have actually seen critical decisions delayed because a potassium result was interpreted in millimoles per liter instead of milliequivalents per liter, all because of a subtle LOINC variant or just a unit mismatch. So standardization, it needs constant vigilance. That's a perfect <laughs> example, yeah. The devil really is in the details in health IT. LOINC truly acts as that Rosetta Stone for lab data. Without it, data exchange would just be, well, chaos. Manually mapping LOINC codes. 
It takes forever, and it's definitely prone to human error. But now we're seeing AI models emerge. They can parse those free text lab test names using natural language processing, and then they suggest appropriate link codes. That significantly cuts down the manual effort. And what's more, AI-powered tools can even scan incoming data streams. They look for common unit discrepancies or those contextual errors based on patterns they've learned. They can flag potential issues before they ever reach a clinician's screen. It's, uh, it's a massive leap forward for data quality. So once you have that link code firmly established, the next crucial step, that involves the integration team. They're kind of the guardians of the data flow, right? They update the HL7 interface, that's HL7, to accept the BNP result. HL7, for anyone less familiar, it's the global standard for exchanging clinical and administrative data. So within that standard, they need to confirm that the ORUR01 message, that's the observation result message, that it includes all the key data points, the LOINC code, the correct units, the result value itself, and importantly, the precise reference range. We use HL7 simulators to rigorously test this before anything goes live, this meticulous validation. Yeah, that's where the rubber really meets the road. You mentioned testing with HL7 simulators. What's like the most common, maybe unexpected configuration error you found in those simulators? Something that typically catches people off guard, and how does it usually show up in the electronic health record, the EHR? Oh, that's a great question. Hmm. One of the trickiest errors often comes down to segment repetition, or maybe unexpected data types within a specific segment. For instance, uh, an HL7 message might be expecting a numeric result, right? But if the lab system accidentally sends, say, a text string like TNP for test not performed, well, the integration engine might either just drop the whole message or maybe it truncates the data, and that leads to either a missing or an incorrect result showing up in EPIC. It seems like a small detail, but it can completely break that chain of information. And this is another area where AI is definitely gaining traction. Beyond just manual test patients, you know, AI-driven anomaly detection can monitor that HL7 message traffic in real time. It can identify unusual message structures or missing data points way faster than any human could. It can pinpoint those subtle format errors or unexpected segment patterns, basically preempting interface failures before they impact patient care. Think of it like um, an intelligent sentinel constantly watching for digital irregularities. Okay, so once the data is flowing cleanly through the interface, then the application analyst steps in. This is where you configure EPIC itself. You'll add the BMP test to a result component list. Then you link it to a specific flow sheet row, something like cardiology labs. And optionally, maybe you include it in the snapshot view if it's considered high value for the MDS. That's the minimum data set. This is where the raw data truly gets structured and presented in a way that makes immediate sense to clinicians. And that MDS piece, it isn't just about display, it's actually a critical standardized set of data elements. It's mandated for certain care settings, like long-term care facilities. And it influences reimbursement and quality metrics. So making sure BNP appears there correctly means it contributes directly to the organization's compliance and even its financial health. This step really highlights that critical bridge, doesn't it? Between the raw data coming in and the actionable clinical insight the doctor needs, the application analyst isn't just, you know, clicking buttons in a system. They're actually designing the user experience for the clinician, placing that BNP result in a cardiology lab's flow sheet, or maybe a quick snapshot view. That directly impacts how efficiently a doctor can track a patient's heart health trend, rather than having to like hunt for it across multiple different screens. It really serves that goal of rapid informed decision making. Could AI potentially assist in optimizing these user interfaces too? For maximum clinical impact. Oh, absolutely. AI can analyze clinician workflow patterns, how they move through the EHR, what data they access most often. Based on that analysis, AI could suggest optimal placement for new lab results like BMP, or maybe even dynamically adjust the display of information to highlight critical results that are most relevant to what the clinician is doing right at that moment. It's kind of moving beyond static design towards a more adaptive, intelligent user interface, but configuration, it doesn't stop there, not at all. Once it's configured, it is time to test. And I mean rigorous testing. You log in with a test patient. Ideally, you have predefined scenarios that cover normal BMP values, high values, low values. Then you verify everything. Does BMP actually show up in the correct flow sheet? Are the units right? Are their reference ranges accurate? Are the abnormal flags, you know, high-low indicators working precisely as they should? Is it visible in that snapshot view if it needs to be? This validation step, this is where you catch potential patient safety issues, and you mitigate them before they ever become real-world problems. I know I've spent countless hours just confirming that a single decimal point isn't out of place. 
because that tiny error, it could change a whole treatment plan. Right. This phase of rigorous testing is really the moment of truth. It's where all the previous steps, the link mapping, the HL7 configuration, the application build all get put to the real world test, so to speak. Identifying any discrepancies here before go live, that prevents potential patient safety issues down the line. It's all about proactive quality assurance, making sure the system behaves exactly as intended every single time. Beyond the manual test patients, how much could AI elevate this testing process, make it even more robust? Oh, significantly. <laughs> Imagine AI-driven test data generation. It could create thousands of realistic, varied patient scenarios, including really complex edge cases that human testers might easily miss. Then you have automated scenario testing platforms, often powered by AI. They can run through all these scenarios at incredible speed, validating every possible path the data could take, you know, from the lab instrument all the way to the clinician's dashboard. And they ensure not just functionality, but also performance under heavy load. This kind of testing, it goes way beyond what manual efforts can achieve. It catches those subtle bugs that could lead to critical delays or errors in a live environment. Okay, so finally, the solution really comes together through strong collaboration and uh, careful governance. You absolutely must notify your reporting team. They need to update their dashboards, their quality metrics to include this new BNP data. And if the test needs to appear in things like discharge summaries or CCDS, that's a continuity of care document, super vital for patient handoffs, you have to update those mappings too. This ensures that information flows seamlessly as patients move through the healthcare system. And critically, you have to check if the test has privacy implications. Ah, yes, privacy. Crucial. Super crucial. For example, tests for HIV, that's human immunodeficiency virus, or maybe certain genetic markers. They often require specific access restrictions or maybe special consent flags in the system. You absolutely must work closely with your privacy officer. Make sure you're in full compliance. This broad collaborative effort involving reporting, continuity of care, and especially privacy, it really underscores that integrating a new lab isn't just an IT task, it's really an organizational imperative. Those privacy implications are particularly important, definitely. Mismanaging sensitive data can have severe legal and ethical consequences. It impacts patient trust, institutional reputation. It's huge. So this governance piece ensures not just that things work, but that data is handled responsibly and ethically. Can AI play a role here too? Helping organizations maintain that level of privacy and compliance, especially with regulations always evolving. It absolutely can. AI can assist privacy officers by, say, scanning system logs or data exports for sensitive data that might be exposed through misconfigurations, especially for tests like HIV or those genetic markers we mentioned. AI can also help by monitoring access patterns to sensitive data. It can flag unusual or unauthorized attempts that may be manual audits would miss, it's a much more proactive approach to data security and privacy, which is becoming increasingly vital. And one last thing before go live, don't forget, clinician enablement. Right, the end users. Exactly. Create quick tip sheets, maybe short targeted training sessions. Clinicians need to know not just that the BNP result is available now, but precisely where it appears in the EHR. They need to know how to interpret it and what immediate actions they might need to consider if it comes back abnormal. From your experience, What's a common oversight in clinician training that can really hinder adoption? And could AI maybe offer a solution there as well? Hmm, a huge oversight is often the one-size-fits-all training approach. You know, clinicians are incredibly busy, and sitting them down for a generic hour-long session, it often just doesn't stick. The most effective training, I've found, is role-specific and just-in-time. And AI can actually help personalize this. Imagine an AI-powered learning platform. It analyzes a clinician's specific role, maybe their historical EHR usage patterns, and then it delivers these bite-sized relevant training modules precisely when they might need to interpret or interact with a new lab result like BNP. Or even think about AI-powered chatbots integrated right into the EHR. They could answer quick questions like, where do I find the BNP trend? Or what's the critical value for this? It, it shifts training from being the static event to more of an ongoing Going adaptive support system. So, okay, here's your go live checklist kind of summarized. Loink mapping, done. HL7 interface, validated. Epic component updated and linked. Check. User interface confirmed. Yep. Stakeholders notified. Done. Data integrity tested thoroughly. Yes. Training completed. Check. That's basically it. And as we look towards the future, it's really clear that AI isn't just some buzzword anymore, right? It's rapidly becoming this indispensable co-pilot for us healthcare IT professionals. From automating the routine tasks, like we talked about, to providing predictive insights, enhancing data integrity, AI is fundamentally shaping how we master healthcare IT. So the question for you now is, 
How will you start integrating AI into your daily workflow to become an even more indispensable asset to your organization? If you found this walkthrough helpful, remember my real skill is teaching you how to use AI to master healthcare IT, to help you excel in your day-to-day -day role as an analyst, informaticist, or healthcare tech professional. See the links below to connect for your one-on-one -on -one coaching experience.